Hi everybody, I've got a bit of a tutorial today with a Christmas theme and seeing as it is 35 degrees today in Hobart I thought we'd make something that gave us a nice cozy feeling of snow. So we're going to make a snow globe. I'm going to start off with a 10 by 210 millimeter artboard. Um, I'm just in Essentials Classic today in my workspace. You can change that to whatever you like. We're going to be opening panels as we go. I've also popped my rulers on and to do that you can hit command R or control R if you're on a PC. Uh, if you ever hear me say command through the rest of this tutorial you can interchange that for control on a PC. So I'm going to start off with a shape. I'm going to start off with an ellipse today. So that's in the shape tool over here. And holding down shift I'm going to click and drag myself out a circle. Now this just has uh, the gradient because I was working with it before but yours might look something a little bit more like this. So let's go with that. We've got a circle with a white fill and a black stroke. Now I want several copies of this so I'm going to use this shape multiple times in the exact same position through the rest of this tutorial. The easiest way to do that is actually just to go to my layers panel. I'm going to grab this layer and drag it down onto the new. What that's going to do is actually give me a new layer and it's going to copy the exact contents of that layer at the same time. So it's a really handy tip um, rather than just creating a new layer and then having to put a shape onto it. You can just do it in one step, grab the layer, drag it down. I'm actually going to do that four times. So I've got layer one and then you can see I've got copies of that layer. While we're doing this we might actually rename these just to help us to create our shapes as we go through the tutorial. This first layer I've just double clicked. I'm going to change this to snow drift one. This layer above it will be snow drift two. This layer here will be called globe. And this layer I'm just going to call circle shape. And that's just going to keep it there in case we need it for later. So first we're going to work on our snowdrift one. So I'll select that but I want to toggle the visibility off of my other circles because I don't need them at the moment. They can just sit there. That's totally fine. So on snowdrift one we're going to create a shape and we're going to use our intersect um, pathfinder panel to save the shape that we want. So I'm going to use my pen tool for this. You could use the curvature tool if that's your thing. I think the pen tool is a fabulously versatile tool so that's why I'm going to use it. I'm going to start out here outside my circle and draw a line that will sort of sweep through my shape and then I can just come out around the outside over here. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if the shape outside of the circle is a little bit raggedy edge or whatever that's going to be disappearing later so don't worry too much. The other thing that I'm going to do with that shape is remove the fill so that way I can see my two shapes and where they intersect. If you want to change this line you can always come to your direct selection tool and manipulate that a bit more. Oops, didn't mean to move my circle so I've just hit command Z. Um, I'm going to just manipulate this line a bit, make it a bit more uh, curvy for my snow drifts. Fantastic. So these are the two shapes that I want and I'm going to select them both and then I need my Pathfinder panel. I find that under my window, Pathfinder. Now I already have mine open so you can come over here and this is the tool that I'm going to use today called Intersect. When I have both of my shapes selected and I hit Intersect it's just going to leave me with the shape that intersects between those um, two shapes that I had. So that's fine, I don't need to use that shape any further at the moment. I'm going to toggle the visibility off and I'm going to go to Snowdrift 2 and do the same thing. But this time I'm going to do a Snowdrift on the other side. Now if you wanted to you could copy and paste um, your Snowdrift from before and, and use that. Um, but I'm just going to go through the process again because it's just a, a nice way of practicing. So again I'm going to come out and I'm not really happy with that shape as it is. So I'm going to drag these anchors around until I've got a snow drift that's sort of what I'm after. So something like that. I might even just grab this shape and tilt it a bit. Fantastic. So I want this shape that intersects in the, in the middle. So again I'm going to select both those shapes and go up to my Pathfinder panel and hit Intersect. So now if I toggle both of those on you can see I have two different shapes. These are going to sit at the base of my snow globe um, and form my snow drifts. While we're here we may as well add some colour to them just for fun. Now my overall looks going to be a bit of a midnight blue with pink and mauve hues um, and you could do whatever you like, play around with it. It's just colour so much fun so it's a good thing to have a play around with. Uh, so I'm going to come over here to my swatches panel. I'm just starting with any gradient. 
Uh, I tend to do that because then it's just easy to adjust. I'm going to remove my stroke though so I don't need that on my shape. Okay and so I'm in my gradient panel. If you don't have your gradient panel open you can go to window gradient and open that up. At the moment this is a linear gradient which I'm happy with and I just want to change some of these around. So I'm actually going to change this or sort of a uh, purpley color and at the bottom here um, I will leave it white. I'm actually going to change the opacity though to 0% um, and you'll see why in a minute because part of this tutorial is about how you're layering up different shapes and you can kind of go nuts with it. We'll just do it quite simply but you can add other shapes to it later. So I've got that first gradient and I'm going to select now their shape behind. An easy way to start it is to use your eyedropper tool and grab the gradient from the front and I again now can manipulate that. So I might make this one, this is probably going to be a bit darker, that's fine, but I'm going to change the angle. So maybe instead um, it'll be 45 or let's just have a look, maybe we'll go, there we go, I'm pretty happy with that, that looks quite quite nice. What I might do is I might actually just knock that bit of back a bit so it's about 80% rather than 90 and make that a darker colour. Cool, okay. As these layers build up, you'll see and, and we'll manipulate it more, but I'm quite happy with that for now. Okay, so I've got my Snowdrift 1 and my Snowdrift 2, and I've got my globe. I'm going to switch my globe on. Now you can see because that's sitting in the hierarchy at the top that it's now covering everything underneath, and we don't really need that to um, cover everything. So we're going to just um, select a no fill for that shape at the moment, just so we can see what we're doing. The other thing that I'd like to do is I'm going to um, just take that globe to the back. So I'm going to click and drag it to the back. And I am also going to put another shape in the background. I'm going to grab a rectangle and drag out an instance of a rectangle. And I'm going to give that some color. So I want this rectangle's fill to be a nice sort of dark blue for mine. So I can double click and let's see, find something there click OK now that shape that um, color is sitting in front of my ellipse at the moment so I can either go to my layers panel and click and drag that below and that you can see my ellipse has popped up here or I can cut it and paste it into the back whatever your workflow is now I'm going to add a um, gradient to this shape as well and again if I use my eyedropper I can just grab the gradient from anywhere. This one's going to be a radial gradient though. So let's go to our gradient panel. And instead of linear, which is this one, we're going to go to radial. And I don't want this to be purple. This time I'm going to have white. But you can see how intense that is. It really can be knocked right back. I'm going to do that. I might manipulate that a little bit. And the whole thing can go a little bit more transparent. It's just a little bit too much at the moment. So we'll go into our transparency and we'll knock that back as well because we just want it to be a suggestion of a round shape excellent okay so it's starting to come together the next thing that I'd like to do is I'm going to make a little base here for my snow globe and the way I'm going to do that is actually with the pen tool I'm going to get myself a new layer and we'll call this one base because it's the base of the snow globe and I'm just going to click and draw just a very um, not that curvy curve of a bezier and we're going to make this a really thick stroke that's how we're going to make it look like a shape so I'm going to my stroke panel if you don't have your stroke panel up you can go up to window and add that there and I'm going to just start here we go we can just go in our drop down menu maybe even more than 60 points maybe we want to go to 80 yeah that's probably looking pretty good isn't it so that's just at the moment it's just a black stroke on um, a line and it's giving us sort of the shape that we we want um, fantastic so I could either just leave that as a line but I'm just going to convert that to a shape so using the line with the extra stroke has given me the the shape that I require so now I'm going to go up to object path outline stroke and that's what that's going to do is change that line into a shape for me and I'll just adjust that slightly because it's not quite Right, I sort of want it, the shape to be sitting on that other base shape. And um, I'll play around with the colours. I might change this colour as well. That's not quite what I had it in. No, not quite what I had in mind. Let me just muck around with that a bit. 
yeah that's a bit better and this one what I'll use is the eyedropper I'm going to choose that same color and then adjust it from there so I'll just make it slightly lighter fantastic okay so we've got the makings now of our globe we have a shape that is the snow globe we've got two snow drifts you've got the base and we've got a shape that's sitting behind as our background color okay the next thing that we might do is create a couple of christmas trees because it is heading towards christmas and i think that would be quite a sweet thing to add to our illustration now i'm just going to do that with the pen tool you could use shapes or you could do anything inside your snow globe um, i'm just going to draw out um, some trees and add a bit of detail and the way i'm going to do that i'm going to create a new layer again these ones are going to be called trees surprise uh, and I'm just going to create three trees and one will have a star on top. So to do that, I'm just going to click and draw out a shape. Pretty happy with that. I might actually give the bottom of the tree a slight curve. And I can just start with one and then I can copy them. Now I'm going to make these pink. Not that pink, but something like that. I'm kind of liking these, these colours. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Now again, I can keep adjusting these as I go so I'm going to go to my anchor point tool because I wasn't quite happy with this curve I'll drag that out again I might use my direct selection tool and I'll move the point of that tree fantastic now I want to add a couple of details to this front tree I'm going to use my line segment tool I'll just drag that down there we go. this one I might use my pen tool I do love my pen tool so we'll just click and drag out some extra bit of the tree. Okay, now you can see those last two shapes, they've got the pink feel and I actually want them to be a white stroke so I can just go and change that in my swatches panel. Okay, so I'm going to bump up the stroke and I do that in my stroke panel, I might make them two, fantastic. And I want to put a little star on top because this is my, my Christmas tree. So I'll just move that down because I think it'll balance a little bit better. Now to make a star, I could draw that out with my pen tool. But there's actually a super quick way to do it and that is with your shapes. There is a star tool. Now I'm going to click and drag and as I drag and hold, I can use the up and down arrows on my keyboard. Uh, and you can see this is how you can make a triangle if you wanted to. I'm going to have a four pointed star like that. But you know, that's actually not quite how I want it. I want the inner circle of that star to be a bit shallower. So instead, what I'm going to do is click once. And this time I'm going to change it so the inner radius is two. And this is much more the shape that I'm after. I'm just going to switch that over so it's the fill. Fantastic. I'll just scooch that down a touch. And there we go. I've got a little pink Christmas tree. I might make that smaller. And knock it over fantastic okay so I've got my snow globe I've got this tree here this is looking a little bit bright which I'll fix up later but I'm just having a look for um, how it'll look you know in relation to each other zoom in again now I'm going to put three trees so I just want to grab this shape I'm not going to take all of the decoration with it I'm just going to have this one shape now I'm holding down option and dragging down a copy that's just another way of making a selection and copying it you could press command C which is command copy and paste um, but option drag is just a really quick way of working I'm going to make that smaller I've used shift to do that as well because um, that just means that it's constraining my proportions. I have that again. I'm going to click and drag out another instance of that. And I'm going to change the color of these trees probably to something a little bit more mauvey. There we go. And just wondering if I might put that one there all right so I'm going to grab this one but I want it to send it behind that shape so there's a couple of different ways of doing that I could do that over here in my layers I can see this is the one that's selected I could click it and drag it behind that's quite a uh, or I could copy and paste it in there but this is probably something that I would sit and play and adjust for a long time but in the nature of just wanting to kind of move on and show you all the steps so you can make your own design choices I might just not play around too much. We'll, we'll play with that later. That's fine. I'm, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Okay. Next step, we're going to use something called the symbol sprayer tool, which is quite a fun tool if you're wanting to create a pattern that you can make a little bit more random. So what I'm going to do off here on the side, I'm just going to drag over here into 
um, our pasteboard, I'm going to create some circle ellipse shapes, just little ones. These are going to be little snow, let's zoom in a bit, it's little snowflakes here. I'm just going to create three. Um, and these are the, I want to actually make that gradient the opposite way around. So I'm going to go to my gradient panel and I'm going to grab those and switch them over. So you can see inside is the white and then it goes to clear on the or transparent on the outside. Fantastic. So with those selected, I'm going to turn these into a symbol. So I need to create them as a symbol before I can use them in the symbol sprayer. So to do that, I go to my symbols panel, which is here or it's under window and symbols. And you can see there's a few different symbols there, but I'm creating my own symbol today. So with those shapes selected, I go to new and create a new symbol. I'm going to call this snow. I'm quite happy just to leave that as move clip dynamic. All good. That will work exactly as I need it to. Great. Now over here, again, I'm just going to close those trees and kind of tidy this up a bit. I'm going to give myself a new layer. I'm going to call it snow. And I'm going to spray snow with my sprayer all over this shape that we're everywhere I want snow. Now your symbol sprayer tool is over here. And if you hold it down, you'll see there's a few different options. We're going to have a look at those, some of those as well. But just for now, choose symbol sprayer tool. And this is quite big, so I'm going to use the square brackets on my keyboard and just knock that down a little bit. And then I'm going to just start spraying. You can see how it's spraying those symbols out. Don't worry too much if you go outside the globe. I'm going to try and focus on having a few around the edge because I think that looks nice. But yeah, just pop, pop your snow anywhere you want it to be. And when you stop, you'll see that you've got a whole bunch of these repeated symbols um, all over your artboard, which is exactly what we want. It's fantastic. But I want them to look a little bit more random than they currently do. And you'll notice under the symbol spray tool, you've got a few other options. We're going to have a go now at symbol sizer tool. So with that selected, if I click on some, I'll just click and hold down, uh, some will get bigger. And if I hold down option and click on some, they will get smaller. So that's quite fun. Have a bit of a play with that and make some bigger, some smaller, and sort of make them all a bit more random. Fantastic. That's all I really need there. And the other one we're going to use, if you hold that down again, you'll notice there is one called the symbol spinner tool. Now, if you start using this, you'll notice you can change the direction of some of these symbols that you've made. And again, that just kind of ends up making it look a little bit more random. So I'm just going to grab those, spin them around a bit. So someone's shaken up this snow globe. Great. And I might even just, um, holding down shift, make all of my symbols a little bit smaller. Now you could play around with that for quite a while. I'm just trying to do that quite quickly. But again, you can take your time. Now this is where it's really handy that we kept that version of the circle shape. So toggle that on and you'll see we've got the circle shape here. I'm going to command C that, toggle it off again and go to my snow. And command F that places it in front and I want to use it as a clipping mask for my symbols. So with that selected, making sure it's in front and selecting your symbols, you can right mouse button click and go to make clipping mask. The last step that I will show you making um, a bit of a shine to the globe. So there's two things that I'm going to do. I'm going to use this same circle again and I'm going to put another gradient that will lean heavily towards this side of the shape and I'm also going to put a bit of shine um, on the top there. So I'm going to grab that circle shape now and drag it up to the top and toggle it on. So I'm going to copy it. Again I might just toggle off that circle shape there. Now this is the one where I'm going to make the shine. So I'm just going to drag it down. I'm going to make that a bit smaller. Great. And then I'm going to drag another copy and make it a different color. It can be any color because I'm just focusing on this other side shape. Now you can have a play around with that and see what you like the look of. But I'm just going to, what I want is just a little bit of a curve, um, a bit of a kind of a crescent shape. And then I'm going to come in with my eraser tool and erase part of it. So with both of those selected, again, I'm going to come to my Pathfinder panel. The one that's really handy for this is I only want to keep that edge. So I can actually do the one in the Pathfinder panel that's called minus front. So that's this one here. If I click that, I'm just left with just this behind shape. So that's fantastic. That's all I need. I'm going to use my erase. I'm just going to 
draw through it a little bit okay now as you can see that shape that's a bit much we don't need it to be that harsh so we can actually just knock back the opacity a bit there to transparency panel here or you can go under window transparency and I'm just going to knock that back to maybe like yeah 16% 15 16 and you can see it just gives a look of it kind of being a little bit more shiny okay and the last step I'm going to do is this circle shape here I'll toggle that on fantastic now this I'm going to add a gradient to and again I don't need a stroke on it I'm going to I can just add any gradient go to the gradient panel and this is going to be a radial gradient here so I can select this um, and I'll just play around with it and again this will kind of be your preference I'm going to kind of give it a slight yellow to it I think let's take that down add a bit of yellow great I'll knock it down a little bit there and whoops This will need to be the yellow as well, but at 0%. Fantastic. Now with these gradients, I know this looks a little bit weird at the moment, but with these gradients, um, when you're setting them up in the gradient panel, it usually just does the gradient from the center, but you can actually come over here to your gradient tool and you can change the way the gradient works. So you can have a bit of a play around with that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click and drag from that side. And you can see how now it's got the gradient starting as the middle point over here and the heavier part is down on the bottom of my snow globe, which is what I want because you can see where the shine is and this is almost like a shadow. It's just giving it a bit of shape. Now, the other thing that I want to do is actually knock this right back. So I'm going to go to my transparency. I'll take it down to maybe like 28. Uh, I might even make that a pink. Let's see how it looks as a pink it might be yeah yeah that's probably a little bit better and again this is this will just come down to you having a play around and see what it is that you like the look of now obviously that's now sitting on top of this base shape which is not what I want so I actually want to bring that base so it's sitting on the top so I'll just drag that to the top and there you have it you've created um, some snow drifts and some trees and some snow using your symbol sprayer tool and some other great shapes. Now I'm going to speed this up for the very end and you can sort of see how I'll play around with different things just using the techniques that we've learnt in, in this time and I might add a little bit of typography as well. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and enjoy exploring Illustrator wherever you are in the world. Thanks. Bye. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>